I have you. I need some advice on what to buy. buy. I told you are an ID Okay, okay. You want to know what keyboards to buy? I got you. Well, howdy, hey. Hippio Tech here, and I've been making videos for about a year now. Congratulations to me. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite keyboards that I've checked out in the last year. However, they must be in stock, like you can actually buy them. They must be hot swap, and obviously I need to have reviewed them. I could have made a list of just my favorites, but what good is that if they're not in stock? If you've ever tried to look at keyboards, it could be really confusing and really overwhelming, and I'm going to make this pretty easy for you guys. I'm going to be breaking it down into layout preference and budget and then you guys can go from there. If you need more help building a keyboard, I recommend joining my Discord. Anyways, let's get started. Speaking of getting started, let me give an extra howdy hey to the 20% of you that are actually subscribed. You should get started by hitting that subscribe button right now. There you go. So my list here follows no particular order, so no one keyboard is better than others. But first, let's take a look at the Drop Alt High Profile. Now, this bad boy is definitely overpriced and comes in at $230 to $250. It's a 65% keyboard, meaning the F row is gone, but it still keeps the arrow keys on the right, which I definitely prefer for most people getting into the hobby. Now, you can either get this board as a fully built kit, with the keycaps and switches included, or bare bones so you can build one yourself. And I'll include links to all of these things down in the description. Now, this board has some perks, like the fact that if you get it from Drop, you can bundle it with keycaps and save a little bit of money. However, it does have some cons, like drops very long shipping time on average, and the fact that these switches have north-facing LEDs, which can cause interference with some keycaps. If you're new to the hobby, I recommend searching up Cherry Profile North-Facing Interference, and that'll explain it a little bit. The vast majority of people won't care though, so don't worry about that. Let me give you a tiny little test of before and after modding. Now, this is definitely one of the most expensive options on my list here. And I would wager to say if you can find it on sale, like for $180 for the fully built kit, then it could be worth it. However, there's really just not a lot of good 65% that are reliably in stock for me to recommend. So on to the next board. Often when I have friends get into the hobby, they really don't want to go with a keyboard that's too small because they feel like giving up keys will kind of ruin their freedom. In this case, I've chosen the Epo Maker EP84. You can find this keyboard on Epo Maker's website, and it comes in at 85 US dollars, which is a pretty good deal fully built. I just recommend getting it with Gateron Reds or Gateron Black switches, as the other two are going to be kind of crummy. Something to keep in mind with a lot of these boards is they'll have cramped arrow clusters or weird right shifts or bottom mods. If you're looking to swap out keycaps, then definitely make sure that your set supports it. In this case, the board has a 175U right shift. It's made from plastic, so it's definitely on the cheaper side, but it is one of the better sounding plastic boards that I've gotten my hands on. And the keycaps were actually pretty decent quality. I'd say of all of the boards on my list, this board definitely has the most potential for being so budget. Now, as I mentioned before, all of these boards have hot swap sockets, meaning that you can remove your switches and replace them without having to desolder and resolder them. This is super great for someone getting into the hobby, as it's really hard to assume that everybody has a soldering iron laying around and two hours to spare. This means that if you want to upgrade the board later, you definitely can. And that makes it a bit of a better option for someone that might not know if they feel like upgrading stuff yet. Let me just give you a quick little five seconds of this board, and this is stock. Because this is a 75% keyboard, having those F keys around might make some of you very happy. I know it definitely makes me happy. And it's honestly one of the better sounding board stock of anything on this list. Okay, time to go to the next one, right? Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, Hippio, bruh, my freaking, my, I need my numpad. My numpad is my lifeblood. Please don't let go of my numpad. And yeah, I know what you mean. Not really, but a lot of people definitely ask me to cover boards with numpads. And this is definitely one of my favorite that I've covered in the last year. This is another Epo Maker board, but it's rebranded under a ton of different names, and it's the GK96XS. You guys remember when I still did silent films and stop motions? Oh, this is so heartwarming. I'm looking back at all my old videos, it's quite great. Anyways, this board really blows you away at 109 US dollars, and the keycaps are quite incredible. The stabilizers come kind of lubed, but frankly, none of the stabilizers on any of these boards are good, and you should replace almost all of them with Duroc plate mounts, link in the description. But this board gives you a lot of cool features, it's Bluetooth, it supports Windows and Mac, and that numpad is very special for those of you that like it. Also, it comes with the option of getting Gateron yellow switches, which I definitely recommend. They're freaking great. 
Also, if for some reason you prefer your left hand over your right hand, or, or left-handed or something, it comes with that option too. But I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, that's way too expensive, 109 US dollars? I'm a broke boy. I'm a proud member of Broke Boy Gang. All right, Broke Boy Gang, I got you. Now, this is definitely the cheapest board on the list and can range from 60 to $80, but as of filming, it was 65 US dollars. Now, this is another 65% keyboard, so say goodbye to your F keys if you like those. But you can still use the F keys via function row, it's just not as handy. This is a stacked acrylic case, and if you're an RGB gamer out there or just someone that appreciates pretty lights, this is the board for you. It also features south-facing LEDs and is one of the coolest cases of any of these boards, honestly. Stacked acrylic sounds quite unique and looks really, really unique as well. Now, I've got two separate experiences with this board. One, I built and modded myself with Gateron Reds, and you can check out that video if you want. But I also built one for Cozy, one of my fans, and that turned out incredible. This was like a $140 build to get these keycaps and switches in here, and this thing turned out fantastic. Here's a before and after. Like, if I had to pick a favorite of all of these children that I'm reviewing on this list, this one would probably be it, as I recommend this one to my friends probably the most of any keyboard. The stabilizers suck, but really all of these stabilizers suck, so that's what you get. If you want a more standard layout, I'll link the Gamma K K87 in the description as well. I've checked out that one, it's also great. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ah, Hippio's made a video and he's gone six minutes without mentioning Idobao. This is literally insane. And yeah, that physically hurts me, okay. Idobao is a sponsor of mine, however, they aren't related to me featuring this board in the video, by the way. Now, the Idobao ID80 holds a special place in my heart, as it was my very first enthusiast mech. Now, honestly, it's not that great, and has a lot of things that are better than it now. But it's a 75% aluminum keyboard that remains in stock to this day, and it's only 140 US dollars. However, the switches and keycaps are not included. This bad boy is known for being super hollow, and the optional foam is definitely necessary. But fully modded out with foam, it sounds very muted, and I like it quite a lot. There's been a lot of hot competition in the 75% market lately, and I'll talk about that very shortly. But yeah, as this was my first mech, I kind of have to recommend it. It's what got me into the passion, and I still keep it around and use it from time to time. Here's a sound test. Now, a lot of options on this list are not necessarily the best in their field, but I had to make this list with the idea that you had to be able to buy it and I had to be a little bit reasonable with it. Not everybody has four months to just wait around for a board to restock, or five to six months to wait for a group buy to fulfill. They just kinda want a keyboard. Now, if you're one of those people that can wait for months, this video probably wasn't for you. Now, I imagine some of you goofballs have already commented about this board, and uh, you probably didn't watch to the end, did you? So, I have not yet checked out the GMMK Pro, so I could not include it as a recommendation in this video. Because my whole thing was only including boards that I personally reviewed, I can't include this, but if you want a review of it, definitely let me know in the comments. Similarly, another honorable mention is the upcoming Keychron Q1. This is a 75% aluminum board that looks like it's going to shake some things up and maybe be better than the GMMK Pro, which I might check it out later. Get subscribed. Other honorable mentions would be the NK65 Entry Edition, the Portico, the KBD67 Lite, but all of those aren't necessarily in stock, and some of those I haven't checked out yet. This was definitely a different video than normal, so if you liked it, definitely hit the like button and leave me a comment to let me know. Also, I made a Twitter, so go ahead and follow me there if you want. Ugh. Finally, a special thank you to Beezer, Starchild, Exco, Acreation, Fenny, Joseph Krang, Rosie Ray, and Aquarius Keyboards for hitting the join button down below. Bye!